Okay, hi there. Uh, my name's Dushan. Uh, I'd like to thank you first for accepting this abstract for, for an oral presentation. Um, so basically this started out as an audit, in fact, um, and we analysed the factors um, uh, around uh, hip revision surgery at, at our centre um, from 2000 to 2008. Um, so a bit of background, there are 35,000 uh, total hip uh, replacements carried out in the National Health Service in the UK uh, each year. Between 10 to 15% of these are revisions, uh, commonly due to aseptic loosening, um, osteolysis, degeneration from wear debris, septic loosening, and also poor surgical insertion. Um, so in order to have done this, I needed a standard to compare our, our results by, and the standards that, that we used were uh, NICE guidelines, which are the National Institute of Clinical Excellence, which had uh, issued these guidelines in April 2000 which set out a rate of revision for failure of 10% or less for a given prosthesis at 10 years. So this enabled us to compare our data against this standard. So the aim was to review and analyze the total number of primary total hip replacements carried out at our center since the implementation of these guidelines in April 2000 and had a look at which, which one of those subsequently required revision. So why, why was it important for us to do this? Because revision hip, total hip surgery is costly, time consuming, and most importantly causes significant morbidity. And therefore every effort should be made to minimize premature revisions. So what was the selection criteria? So we basically have a clinical coding system whereby we can have a look at the patients that had a primary total hip replacement and a revision done and see which ones matched up. And we did this between April 2000 when the guidelines were issued up until January 2008. These revealed 61 uh, records of uh, hip revision surgery that we could look at. Um, and we also analyzed the, the total, primary, uh, total uh, primary hips that were done during this period so we can compare the, the incision, whether they were cemented or uncemented uh, hips. Um, we initially did a pilot study just to make sure that this was, in fact, a feasible study to, to do. Um, so our results reveal that there were 2,134 total hips performed between April, and April 2000 and January 2008, and of these 61 were revised. This gave us a revision rate of 2.9%, which, uh, which was good for the, those nice guidelines that I, I, I talked about earlier. Um, so this is just a pie chart illustrating um, the, the revisions and the, the, the total number of primaries that we had done. And this is a distribution of sex. So as you can see, that the, the female group had the highest number of re revisions done at 4.22%, as opposed to the males at 2.03%. This is a, a bar graph for which basically illustrates that the, the peak number of age, age range where the uh, revisions were most were 66 to 70 at 19 patients. And this slide illustrates uh, when those uh, patients that had primaries went on to being revised and uh, most significantly 62% were at less than within one year of uh, their primary. So what was the, the main reasons for revision surgery? Dislocation was primarily the, the greatest and thereafter infection, so that was septic, uh, septic loosening. And then 5% was other, so other included periprosthetic fractures. And this, this uh, table just illustrates um, the, the patients that, that went on to have revisions, whether they were cemented or uncemented. And the uncemented group at 3.7% was, uh, was higher than the cemented group at 2.2% for having revision.